Born under humble beginnings, Abraham Lincoln would go on to be elected as the 16th president of the United States, lead the Free Soilers movement, which then became the abolitionist movement, while also fighting for and succeeding in reuniting the United States. Lincoln's selfless efforts have formed our current nation's geography and monumentally transformed how different races treat each other. Lincoln's literacy later in his life was greatly impacted by his early childhood. Following his mother's death to milk sickness and his father's second marriage, his new stepmother encouraged her children to read and write, which then helped Lincoln transcribe and deliver monumental speeches later on in his life. After a few years as Abraham started growing up, he went on to work as a cabinet maker and a rail splitter. These physical jobs never fully suited Lincoln's love for literature, so he then ran for his first government role in 1834 and succeeded in gaining a seat in the Illinois legislature. As years passed by, Lincoln would go on to marry three times, become a lawyer by using borrowed books to study law, and eventually, in 1847, he was elected to the House of Representatives by gaining the Whig Party nomination for Illinois' 7th District. Although Lincoln did only serve one term in the House because he believed that his party leader, Henry Clay, would not be re-elected, it was here that Lincoln would first share his political views. At this time, Lincoln was an avid supporter for the Free Soilers movement, as well as being opposed to the Mexican-American War. At the end of the war, Lincoln would go on to support the Wilmot Proviso, which sought to prevent the establishment of slavery in the newly gained territories from Mexico. By supporting the Wilmot Proviso, Lincoln cost himself being ridiculed by many Democrats and later on having to turn down jobs because of his status as a Free Soiler. After his short-lived time in the House, Lincoln went back to his law practice. This period in his life is where he earned the title Honest Abe. In one of Lincoln's landmark cases, Lincoln went on to win his trial and earn the respect of the Democratic judge overseeing it. In addition to earning respect as a lawyer, during this period of his life, Lincoln would use his skills and love for literature to write many essays on his political views that would slowly lead to him emerging as a largely influential representative of the Republican Party. His writings showed that he believed in the slow abolition of slavery and opposed the Compromise of 1850. He also opposed the Kansas-Nebraska Act inducted by Stephen Douglas that proclaimed popular sovereignty should decide the status of slavery in the new territories. Later on, Lincoln would also write about the Dred Scott decision claiming that the decision by the Supreme Court was morally wrong and that it went against the Founding Fathers' principles of human rights. While not placed on the ballot for the Republican Party in the election of 1856, Lincoln was still a widely known political figure who gave the closing speech at the Republican Convention. His views, and in turn the views of the party, were already foreshadowing those to come in the election of 1860, calling for union in the country and the right for Congress to regulate slavery. A Democrat by the name of James Buchanan eventually won the election, and Republican ideals would have to wait to be pursued by the executive branch for the next four years. As the election of 1860 approached, the national debate over slavery had still not even been attempted to be settled, and many citizens feared an all-out war. In Lincoln's house-divided speech, he warned of the dangers of disunion and that the country needed to come together or they would fall. His views on how the nation should come together were then shown in 1858 during the historic Lincoln-Douglas debates, which were held to establish whom among Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas would take a chair in the Illinois legislature. Throughout seven separate debates, the two would battle over their views on slavery through sophisticated language keeping a civil tone. Lincoln's stance was that slavery was immoral, went against the Founding Fathers' principles, that all men are created equal and should be prohibited in expanding westward. Douglas argued for a much more lenient policy that followed the sentiments given from the Dred Scott decision. While Lincoln was deemed the loser of the debate and Douglas was elected to sit in the legislature, Lincoln's claims would soon be fulfilled. This event helped establish Lincoln as a Republican leader and set him up for the nomination for president in 1860. The selection of Lincoln was due to his fame from the Lincoln-Douglas debates, his involvement in the election of 1856, and because his goals of stopping the expansion of slavery while not quickly abolishing. 
This seemed like a realistic goal to pursue that could at least get some support of the nation's democratic citizens. While the idea of civil war was in the air, the Republicans did not realize the backlash that would arise from not electing a pro-slavery candidate. Because of the harsh reality that most Southerners disapproved of Lincoln's views, his election directly led to the secession of South Carolina, which was then followed by 10 other Southern states. This act of disunion was exactly what Lincoln feared would happen, and with the official start of the war with the Confederate-led attack on Fort Sumner, Lincoln's first goal of the war was to bring the nation back together as one. Lincoln's involvement as a military leader throughout the Civil War should not be overlooked. He proved to be one of the most involved presidents throughout a military campaign ever, fully adopting the commander-in-chief position given to him. Lincoln oversaw the war plans and tactics that would be used to defeat the South, such as the Anaconda Plan. He read over most reports from the War Office while making sure the Union kept an aggressive attack against the South. It was largely in part to Lincoln's efforts as a military leader throughout the war that saw the South was defeated and the states were reunified. Throughout the war, the main goal of the Union changed from reunifying the country to abolishing slavery entirely. This was partially a tactical move from the Union in order to prevent the British and other European countries from helping the South secede. As most European countries had already abolished slavery, they could not support a people who wanted to keep it. It should be said that while Lincoln's first goal of the war was not to abolish slavery, and that the move of abolishing slavery to the main goal of the Union was a tactical one, this should not take away from the fact that the Union fundamentally disliked slavery. The Union could only change goals then, midway through the war, because they would have lost support from the border states earlier if their initial goal was to abolish the institution. The addition of abolition to the Union agenda was first seen in the Emancipation Proclamation, which through its contents stated that slavery be abolished in the United States of America. Lincoln quoted saying that, I never in my life felt more certain than I am doing right now than I do in signing this paper. Lincoln knew that a document like the proclamation alone would not be enough to erase slavery, so he oversaw the establishment of the 13th Amendment, which again abolished slavery but this time cemented it into the Constitution. The amendment would prove to be one of the most instrumental in defining how our nation works today and setting civil rights movements for centuries to come. Sadly, months after the Southern defeat and the passage of the 13th Amendment, Lincoln was assassinated in Ford's theater while watching a play titled My American Cousin. Lincoln was on a victory lap celebrating his re-election and the successful abolition. Abraham Lincoln was a man who made selfless attempts time and time again for the causes he saw fit. He gave up positions of power and was ridiculed early in his life for being a free soiler. He risked his life being a commander-in-chief and attending many battles in person. He died living by his beliefs, never flaking from his own. Abraham Lincoln deserves to be in the AP U.S. History Hall of Fame because he led the charge that successfully reunified the Union and cemented the abolition of slavery in the nation's constitution. His missions, emphasized by his leadership throughout the Civil War, left an indelible mark on the history of the United States. His presence was so profound that even after death, the National Abolitionist Legislature continued with the establishment of the 14th and 15th Amendments, which were only the first stepping stones on a path to equality. Abraham Lincoln's efforts gave way to the civil rights movement of the 1960s, led by leaders such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Lincoln's work throughout his life, work that even transcends time, gave way to a more accepting nation of whom would finally strive for the Declaration's promise that all men are created equal.